Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a group. Or Black Rock Depths. I'm going to go through that, and I'm going to burn through one of these episodes. This is a pretty good one, but to be honest, I don't know where we're at in the story, so I'm just going to hit play. Morning. Can you hear me? That one out. That's okay. Thing that the Sage Stone Serpent Wizards, a cankerous substance. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Um, let's see here. So let me give a quick recap. Last time, you guys started to attack um, that Cyphernauticum facility. You fought those uh, crazy early Cyphernauticum creatures. There was a gas releasing from the Cyphernauticum factory that was essentially releasing narrative magic um furthermore as you get on got on with fighting one of the undead flew off kilter into space and actually hit an asteroid and met with one of these hypermites of ishtar a known threat throughout the valley who all bundled up together and hunted for you simultaneously the spell storm above you had a uh, poison mist engulf the entire uh, vista and a purification staff was thrown to Rogar, who was protected by it. Your small shuttle corrosed from within and um, you all decided to head towards the uh, forest like um, yeah what, what would be the word it's it's like a it's like a thicket in space full of mist where you can go to and there is luckily a surface but it's a very alien looking planet uh, it's a, that's the weird thing as you land it you do realize that it's a small biome within the sage stone circles maybe its own little ecosystem and its own little planet be it artificial or magitech you don't know Nevertheless, you met up with the Oracle of Oras, who opened the tree for you, and you went in, uh, sat there for a little while, rested a little while, and you realized that there was a cankerous substance within the tree, uh, one of which got on Rogar's hand, who spat fire throughout the whole tree, um, and... As you got out, you saw that a host of these hypermites were waiting dormantly for you, and the creature that we've now come to know as a Danolo is waiting for you outside, ready to attack. Now, I made a circle to give you guys the opportunity to have that funneling strategy at hand. This is roughly the size of the inside of the tree. However, it does go down, and it goes up a little bit. Down the tree like at the stem of the tree if you will a door uh, a a portal still deactivated uh can be found there and the oracle of aura has told you if you destroy that Donolo who has linked his his viruses with my tree i can get you wherever you want throughout the valley um you guys asked something in rp see here oh yeah Corin asked f to look at the staff and um, it will require a mysticism check to know what it does three two one here we go very good very good Yeah, okay. So, you look at the staff and you immediately link it to the Sage Stone's Spellstorm that was above you. Because it doesn't make any sense to you that a storm would emit a staff towards one living creature and have some arcane mist going. So, it's, it's not a natural phenomenon. 
uh, not by your appearance. It was something that the Sagestone Serpent Wizards uh, sent towards whoever was living down there. And you understand its potency. This one has a sort of uh, socket that you can click in. And the socket that it's activated right now is a protection from poison. Essentially, if you click on it, there's a dome around you that protects you from poison. But there are other skills that you can utilize. Uh, every turn, you can use one of them. And let me share you share with you what those things are. <clears throat> Yeah, you can do a couple of things that I'll put in PC Journal. So all of these can be used once, uh, dear, des uh, dear Corin. Arcane Explosion is a uh, 10d6 explosion that it has a sort of a, a cross uh, range so if I were to use Rogar here then and I cast the arcane explosion on him then an explosion would erupt from him going up 15 feet vertically above 15 feet vertically down 15 feet to the left and 15 feet to the right, like a cross. Yeah, like like a Bomberman. Yeah, exactly. Like Bomberman, yeah. Um, then you can cast Poison Mist again, um, and then the staff would protect you, and the whole scene would be uh, engulfed in uh, poison. Uh, Fess, could you... Put the mic on push to talk because we can hear um, sort of uh, white noise in the background. Ah, uh, yes. One second. Yes, thank you. Um, let's see. Then we have... Um, oh, yeah. Then we have lesser version upon dead. So if Rogar would meet his ultimate fate this uh, session, you can cast that spell on him and then two little versions of Rogar will persist um, and I'm just using Rogar as a example but this can be used on any living creature then we've got um, a, a same damage uh, the same damage template so uh, 10 d6 but then exploding skulls from outside of the map will go to a group of people. So say if Rogar was here and you cast Exploding Skulls, then six of these skulls would float towards him from uh, a direction uh, that the DM decides. So it's a sort of same idea as the Arcane Explosion, but instead of being it being widespread, you can actually single fire it. Um, a reflex save can negate two of these uh, skulls. And last but not least, you can summon a wandering ghost, uh, and you don't know what that does. That's a it's it, it can aid you, but you you're basically summoning an entity from the sage stone circles, uh, which can help you with whatever is going on, but it can also it also has some consequences that you're not really aware of. Surely it's something like returning a favor of sorts for him. Um, when it comes to the poison mist mm -hmm. uh, and the protection from poison, is that like just protection from the airborne poison or uh, if like you're within the aura, say the Danolo attacks with the bile, are you pr protected from the poison? Yes. 
It's an altogether all protection from poison. Okay. And yeah, and the I think the range from last time it's like a ten foot aura, because like it yeah. contains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and feel free to use the free hand uh, thingy to to do your thing there. Um, let's see, what else did you guys ask me? Oh yeah, um, the portal. So Destry sort of said, let's first kill the thing and then decide where to go with the portal. Um, where do you stand on that, Corin? Yeah, I mean, I think... Well, I mean, to use the portal, we have to assist the tree in the first place on these things. So True. if we want to use the portal, we have to fight. Yeah, the tree is a creature, by the way, so it will get attacked as well. Um, I, before, you know, us leaving, uh, the staff is nice, granting that super cool immunity, but... It requires us to stand a little too close to potentially like Rogar mm -hmm. or close to each other in general for that. So if other people would like before we start the fight, I'm at least going to use uh, instant upgrade on myself to give myself a uh, detoxifier organ to give myself a boost against the uh, poison that we potentially will come against. If anyone would like a better liver, please raise your hand. Would you like a better liver for all the family? Exactly. Uh, well, Destry is it going will... to uh, pass on the offer. It's not as comfortable with putting cybernetic stuff in his body as you are. What say you, Rogar? All right, that should do it. Uh, Rogar... Mm. He has had one before, so I guess he can be open for the suggestion, yes. <laughs> so tell us how this happens, Corin. So from Rogar's perspective, probably you can see from the the glow and the touch of Corin's hand, you see the somewhat translucent like pieces of a what you can only assume is an organ just kind of like zooming like passing through your skin and everything passing into you know that part underneath your lower right rib temporarily and magically replacing your current liver with a better one Nice. Yeah, let's, nice. Uh... It's all tingly. <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna go with the um, enhanced detoxifier because we are strong enough. So um, for the next at least two hours. You have a plus four to your fortitude save against poison, and you can twice re-roll, or roll twice, take the better result. Wow. If we were 19th level, I could, I could do the elite one, which grants immunity to poison, but... Ah, uh, that's going to be funny at level 19. Yeah. Ooh. That's if a little ways away, there. though. 
actually spoke with my dad yesterday about this campaign and what I have planned for those levels. He gave me some uh, useful tips. So uh, that's going to be interesting. Um, hey, if we could um, uh, position ourselves accordingly so that we can uh, start our combat heavy session once again um, please put your token on a place that you feel comfortable with um, I, I, I suppose we're going for the AD&D tactic yes exactly with <laughs> Rogar in the opening and the casters and ranged in the back but before we do that uh... You were saying that the might seem to be dormant, or did I got you wrong? So what are no, they doing? You're right, they are standing like on their tail, exactly like on the picture, like so, sort of slightly tilted to the left for them, and um, yeah, they're just sort of waving slowly, like a like a plant under water, and. They seem to be linked to the Donolo, or at least that creature seems to have more of a hierarchy dominance over them. Dominance hierarchy, that's the word. So it's as if they are spectating. Okay. <clears throat> but they're not moving, so about half of them are actually not visible from the tree. We got all these that are directly behind the trees or is this all visible yeah you've seen them by now because you you've had a chance to look at your surroundings and um they they don't make a they don't make a secret of being there so they're not hiding in the tree they're just under the tree standing like that And as we have some time to prepare for combat, mm -hmm. uh, well, Destry does load on uh, his explosive bullets, uh, hoping that the info is actually right, which means half damage is uh, fire. Okay. Uh, and some other stuff on critical hits. Uh, and he will also put uh, two of those uh, sticky bomb grenades uh, on the ground so that they're easily reachable. He doesn't have to go rummaging through his backpack. So sure. I can deploy them in one round rather than having to start looking through my backpack. Or I hang them somewhere on probably at some place to put them. But that they're readily available to deploy one in one round rather than have to go looking through his backpack right okay so you've got them at the ready yes so uh move action to take sound attack to deploy and i have my shock grenades in my launcher so those are immediately usable trip around if i want to all right while uh the um instant upgrade may be a little invasive uh corn will cast a somewhat less aggressive spell on Destry. Recent learning. So a spectral additional arm or kind of just float around Destry. Sold. Yeah, they're just sort of looking through his backpack. There we go. Go looking through his backpack. Right. Okay. So you've got them at the ready. Yes. So uh, move action to take, sound attack to deploy. And I have my shock grenades in my launcher, so those are immediately usable. Trip around if I want to. All right. While uh, the um instant upgrade may be a little invasive 
uh, Corrin will cast a somewhat less aggressive spell on Destry. Recent learning. So a spectral additional arm or <laughs> kind of just float around Destry's current hands, providing him uh, additional intuitive sense so that he can uh, quickly draw those grenades if he needs to. Basically, okay. The spell just gives him a, an extra move action to uh, draw or activate an item. Okay, well, that's where it's slightly freaked out. Typical Corin, always ready to lend a hand. If you're not disturbed, then I'm not doing my job correctly. <laughs> Okay, um, Corin, where do you position yourselves? All right. Well, hold on. Let's see. Is I might need to. When? There we go. At least an opening volley, perhaps. Right, Corin, that 14 out of 45 is your stamina, or...? Uh, could I, well, no. You have more than time enough for a short rest if you spend your resolve point. That That's just a uh, resolve. Oh, that's your resolve. Yeah. Um, Rogar, regarding Tiamat, she has stats now, right? So we can... She, she does... Sadly, no. We never went through it, like like we said we would. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Then then she's just uh, fluff, like maybe dinner for the yeah. her mites. Yeah. Okay. And the dog is the dog. She she's ready. He's ready. Of course. All right. Um. Yeah, we should. I never get around doing that dragon Tiamat thingy. Mm, let's see. We should just uh, agree on a time at a later point where we go through it, I, I think. Uh, yes. Well, I actually just want to look for a, a pre-gen uh, Drake companion. Eh. All right. Let's uh, let's uh, put it on the back burner, as they say in the states. Uh, okay, guys. I am going to give you your initiative round, and then we're going to start. One moment, please. There we go. So let's throw initiative. Uh, so what, before we do that, we can... Well, our tactical... Oh, yeah, have a talk. Discussion is... Well, I assume we start shooting the brain thing, or do we have another plan? It's probably for the best to uh, hit the one unique one first. Cut the head of the snake and all that. But if that thing is resistant to fire, it's probably not smart to be using my explosive bullet. Well, all of them, I think, are... Like, the Hypermites are known as being resistant to fire, but for some reason... 
the dwarves seem to use fire all the time. Okay, then I guess it's going to be normal bullets, so then I'll have to switch around again. Yeah, Corin, the fire thing is more of a... Consider that they work in mines, and it, you know, it just fills up the mine, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an act of desperation, and they have enough fire in those mines to use, so it's more of a... That's the only desperate tactic that they use. There has not been found a useful way against these hypermites thus far. Well, running seems to work. Well, okay, so then I switch back to normal rounds. All right. Right. Then I would like to start this session, this combat session, with Corin. Corin, you are within the tree, and you see the ancient bark of the Oracle of Ores around you. You are peeking right towards over here, and you see these strange creatures. And next to you, your giant companion Rogar stands at the ready. What are you doing? Well, I kind of want these things to group up a little bit more for me to really do my thing. I assume the red circle is the tree. Yes. The open right there is the, the gap. So... Well, I suppose we should have done this beforehand, but here we go. I'm going to give Rogar resistant armor. I'm going to give you DR 10. So against the uh, physical attacks. Nice. Uh, Very nice. Uh, also meaning uh, kinetic attacks, right? Yeah. 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 So DR10 against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Good. Very good. Uh, Rogar already has 15 piercing, so I guess that will be the stats for piercing, right? It doesn't add up as soon as I understand it. Yeah, yeah, it, you go with whatever's highest. So you basically just gain DR10 against uh, bludgeoning and slashing. Yeah, okay. And then your 15th piercing just stays higher. Was that your turn, Corin? Yeah, I'll use that as my turn. All right. Desri, what are you doing? You're seeing uh, the creature to the far. This is what he looks like, by the way. Mm hmm. Yeah, so uh, I just uh, pull attack on it uh, with a deadly aim active, mm -hmm. uh, and I think he should be flat-footed, or maybe, I don't know, if he's aware of combat or not. No, <laughs> he's aware. He's aware around. because he has his... Uh, he has his... Uh, uh, he is linked with the tree, so he knew you were there all along. Uh, uh, what? Well, I'm still gonna try and seize maximum opportunity, so deadly aim active. There we go. Yeah, with what weapon, if I may ask? Is it. I'm gonna switch to. Uh the video of the actual session but I want to comment on my t-shirt because it's a t-shirt from a dungeon synth band called the Temple of Fractured Light 
and their logo is a rainbow. Now, um, I don't have anything against LBGB view, but I am against them completely claiming the rainbow. Because I like rainbows. I think they're cool. Um, but yeah, that, that has completely been taken. Um, so, no, this channel is not political in the slightest. Just so you guys know. I uh, do not condone any form of indoctrination or politics on my channel. Uh, with my combat rifle. All right, all right. Okay, that all hits. <laughs> wow, holy shit. I'll take it the same, that, holy shit. That's a good shot. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a 2d6 that's an addition to this level, so that definitely helps. God damn it, I cannot challenge you guys. All right, uh, let's see here. What, two 19s, I mean. So as you shoot, you have such a great aim and you have such a great opportunity. This is like home for you huddled in a tree nice vantage point directly at the creature you hit it at its vital organs that you identify from basically all the fleshy things that you've shot thus far and you know exactly where to hit it's like close to the neck somewhere along the antenna somewhere along the legs and as you do it you hear the cracking of its um oh i had a lesson from corin the chitin <laughs> armor and sort of a fleshy uh, uh, pus comes out of the creature uh, and a satisfying, albeit terrifying, screech erupts from the creature. <laughs> like that. Yeah, well, it's one giant brain. I mean, it's not difficult to hit a vital organ. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Destry's firearm... I believe already has its own fusions on it, so it counts as a magical weapon. Wow. Well, yeah, and I reduce five uh, damage reduction with my ability as well, in case that wasn't yet factored in. Mm -hmm. That's the, the penetrating attack feat. So. Yeah, you did a lot of damage to it, but it is still alive. <laughs> and you do see that as you shot it, that the, the bullet is sort of... It has to drill into its carapace. So, um, it's, not, it's not alien to shots, weirdly enough, or projectiles for that matter. Um, Rogar, what are you doing? Um, besides from forming his weapon, crackling of fists and getting ready, just going to hold action, I believe, and attack whatever thing comes closest first. All right. You can ready an action. So that the first thing that gets within range, you can uh, strike. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> okay. Very good. Yeah, so the creature goes straight in. Like that. So feel free to attack. Alright, here we go. Unfortunately, you miss. Unbelievable. How can one miss such a big brain? <laughs> well, 
Um, the creature suddenly opens his first frontal uh, claws and you see gnawing teeth from the front of it and many eyes next to his teeth and he's going straight for your throat. Thirty-nine. Uh, yeah, that's a hit. <laughs> All right. So, you see the the many eyes and the creature, and it bites you right in the chest, and you. Um, while it, when you look at the teeth, uh, you consider that it's just one bite, but it's actually a, a bite that burrows further, like a rat, uh, like that torture that they do in, uh, uh, I think the Mafia does that, where they put a rat in a bucket, and they put it on your chest, and then they set it alight so that the creature, the rat, is eating you. Um, and that's what this creature is doing, and you are getting... 25 piercing damage. Alright, so that makes it uh, 10 then. There you go. There you go. What's our dog doing? Uh, for the moment, it's fine. Where it is. Right, and as you look at the dog, you see him um, sort of uh, standing next to you, and suddenly, Destry, you hear your transponder going off. <coughs> Aya, it's Quinn here. <coughs> We're looking for you. We found the shuttle. Where are you at? <coughs> the spell storm has ceased. Is that you said that's Destry's communicator, or is that like our our uh, everyone's? Yeah, oh, everyone's okay. transponder. Oh. Well, Destry just quickly uh, taps his trans. Ponder bottom again, short, long, short, short. That's all he's getting from him. All right. Oh, uh, all right. I learned this at the academy. Uh, I need a burger. No, no. Where's my hand? Oh, let's, let's see. Save, save, save jazz, save rock, save our souls, guys. Okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. We found them. We found them. Let's go. We'll be there. We'll be there in a few minutes. We'll send a shuttle. Over. And he's supposed to be the commander? <laughs> well, it's not even correct. It's not even an SOS, that. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're coming. <laughs> Uh, Corin, what are you doing? And also, feel free to answer the transponder or send a whole different Morse code, like flying circles, or, uh, you know, pay your taxes. Taxes is an obligation. Yeah, don't forget your taxes, everybody. All right. I'm gonna... Let's risk it for the biscuit. So I am going to... Because I don't want to provoke an attack of opportunity, I will spend a resolve point to teleport short range. Nice. 
to right there. And I'm using uh, the flash teleport magic hack, which says that this movement does not provoke an attack of opportunity. There we go. Let's throw that up there so everybody can see it. Smell it, love it. Why did it... Mm. So Destry, again, you being from the valley, your companion suddenly s disappears, and after all this time you realize that Corin is definitely above ECA level 3. Alright, nice. Yep, and uh, that, that was my move action, and then from here, I am going to... Yeah, it's fine for those guys. So I'm just gonna hose. Oh wow, yeah, like this whole area. So I, th yeah, it's a 60 foot cone, so I can get all of these. I think this guy over here at the very end is safe, plus these two. Okay. What are you planning? Our save. I am going to cast... Heat Leech. Ah, oh, man. God damn it. What a shitty damage roll. Jesus. Awful. So, yeah, every, everybody in that 60-foot cone... It needs a reflex save, although... Oh, cool, yeah. So my spell penetration made it through the spell resistance of the Danolo. Mm-hmm, yeah. Which had a 25, so the Danolo also has to make a reflex save. Right. DC 24. Let's start with him. All right, I threw a 23. All right, so failure. Um, nice. I believe that thing is resistant to cold, so it should take only, uh, I think, 47 cold damage. But all those hyper mites in the... within the cone, which includes everybody in this little fray here, all these guys... These two are okay, and this one is too far away. So, let's see. Uh, reflex save. And Would you like me to throw it all for them all or individually? I mean, that's up to you. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of them. Yeah, I'm going to do it once, okay? Oh wait, let's do it like this. I'll throw it once, and if you disagree with the roll, you use a Benny, so I re-roll. <laughs> oh well, you're in luck. You're in luck. Okay, so they all get your sweet damage that you... Thank you! Thank you! I like this, uh, let's disrupt the DM plan in 23, uh, attitude. Alright. And that was a bad damage roll too. That yeah, was, that was really on the low end. Oh, for yeah. That well, one, I was like, "Come on, like I can do better than that." But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, this attack does all awake them. However, that's fine. We need to do. It. Okay, clear them out of here. All right. So I'm but gonna. Now that that would be the standard action of mine. Okay, okay, go ahead. Uh, continue your turn. Well, no, no, that, that was it. Oh, that was I, it. I did. Okay, yeah. Now, move in standard, so. now I have to give them an initiative, and I'm going to do that in three ways. So there are going to be like three waves of these.
All right, and right away, the first three are f approaching you guys. Please uh, use your attack of opportunity. Um, I think it's Rogar. Uh, yeah. Because Destry has a long range. So, oh, okay. That's a bit better. Yeah, that hits. Um, damn it. Okay. So, this creature is almost dead. Nice. Oh no, wait, wait. This one is actually pretty much alive. Because you didn't hit that one, but the rest you did. Um, so, standing in front of you, Brogar, this creature sort of screams as you attacked it. And he's, of course, starting to attack you. But of course, of that's course. what you're here for. <laughs> that's what you're here for. 31. Uh, yeah, that's a hit. Yeah. So they're claws, so I'm thinking that's slashing. Yeah, uh, it seems about right. That's 12 slashing damage for you. Alright, uh, just a flesh wound. Just a flesh wound, exactly. That's the way to think. Yes, that should mean two, right? Excuse me? Because you got the resistant armor, so you have DR10. Right, yeah, I guess it should be just two then. Death 3. Or uh, 8. What are you doing? Uh, well, before this round, I had a look at my uh, attack rolls, and it looked like my penalty for full attacks was not really correctly in there. So the likely should have been a 31, a 23, and a 31 to hit. So I'm hoping at least two of those three still hit. Could you repeat so those uh, attack rolls? So it's a 31 for the first one with a, for 50 damage. Yeah. The 23 for the 49, and then again the 31 for the 53. Ah, okay. So the second one does not hit. Okay. Yes. I. Well, that's what I'm assuming. Thank you. The 19 on a fight should be a hit, but I think that uh, 11... Should have been a miss, so it's in there now correctly. Thank you, thank you for being so transparent. Uh, right, uh, so, uh, right, so they're getting a bit too close, so Destry is gonna run. Uh, back. I think that shouldn't be an attack of opportunity because he has cover, I think, from that one. But... Yeah, I'll say. Yeah. Uh... And then I will use well, the standard action I have left uh, to just shoot at him. And that's a bad roll, but okay. Uh, at whom are you shooting? Uh, at the brain thing. Ah, unfortunately, that misses. Yeah, that's gonna be a miss. Yeah. But that's fine. Alright. So, Corin, as you uh, stand there next to the trees, you look further ahead. You just teleported there. You're not invisible anymore, are you? Or are you? Uh, no, because I uh, threw out that spell that would have broke me. And suddenly, all the reports of the Hypermites of Ishtar seem way too real for you, because as you did that cold damage, 
Um, what was actually the name of that attack? Heat Leech, right. So you, you, you tapped into their heat signatures, and you were thinking, quite scientific, but the horrors, even for your mechanical and scientific mind, catch up, because the horror is actually the most rational thing that's happening right now, because you're seeing these creatures skitter around. It's like a, uh, a mix of swimming over land, swimming in the air, and crawling like a spider towards you. And it's in these moments that you start to realize if only, if only Hargas were here. And suddenly, from the west, you see a light that you recognize. It's one of your subordinates that you cybernetically enhanced. And he's behind a tree, he takes aim, and he shoots one of these creatures. We got him! And suddenly, guys, from the west, you see the people that you saved from pass, led by none other than Alcide Bassifer and the Captain Commander. Also, the dwarf, who's hacking away at this particular asshole. Ah, there you go, you fucker! And he kills him. Reinforcements have arrived. You may yet survive. The dog looks at Alcide and starts to bark, happy. And Alcide is shouting at the dog, stay there with your with your new leader, buddy. I'll be there in a moment. What's the dog doing, Destry? Can't hear you, but unfortunately that bite misses for the hypermite. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just moves up and bites, yes. All right. All right. Rogar, what are you doing? Mm, feeling a bit emboldened by the coming reinforcements, starts hacking away. And yeah, we'll hack away at the big, nice, juicy brain here. And we're going to make a three full attack here. Oh boy. Ah, the third attack is not included here. I... Uh... I'll have to fix that later. Mm -hmm. Do another attack and then we'll pick the, the above one. None of them hit thus far. That one hits. That one hits. It's a solar weapon magic. Uh, no, it's supposedly just slashing or... Yeah, you choose what type it is. All right. Very good. Very good. It's just a fire crystal and it's plus six that deals any elemental damage, so to speak. And... Okay. Very good. Very good. Unfortunately, this guy has a resistance to that, but the, the 38 Something... damage... Hmm? Something about your attack roll doesn't look right. Like, how, do, how did you get a 12... From rolling a four when we're at fourteenth level. That's because the this is three attacks for full attack and it's Solarian onslaught, so it 
instead of it's a minus five to the uh, attack. Yeah, but even with the minus five, it looks like it looks like it's saying your BAB is ten. Because like I'm looking at the math here, your BAB should at least be fourteen. Uh, yeah, minus four full attack. Where's plus four minus six? Why is it doing minus four and minus six? It looks like you're doing the or the math in there that has the penalty for the full attack on there twice. Mm, it, 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 should, it shouldn't be possible for you to get a twelve, uh, even rolling a one at this level. Mm -hmm. It's the minus four and the minus six that does it, right? So it's. Uh, well, essentially... it's, it's, the, it's the minus four, the minus six, and the BAB is too low. Hmm. Hmm. See, because I've added here with the attack roll, it's the strength plus ten. And then for the level, it should be a plus four, so it's fourteen. Normally, it should be eighteen. Um, but I've also had a minus six here because of the Solarian onslaught. Wait, hold on. No, you're right. This is this doesn't add up. Yeah, like the. So let's see. You rolled a four, so it should be four plus fourteen, not ten. Then plus four from your strength, and then. I think minus five, right? Because you you're a Solarian, and I think you have like a ability that means you don't take the full minus six. Yeah, flashing strike. Yeah, one. yeah. But see, that's the thing. When I try to change the attack rolls, uh, the the strength plus the ten here in the attack roll, it doesn't change. So every time I've had to put the uh, plus and the minus numbers here in the bonus. Yeah. Like, whatever that one is. Like, that, that second attack probably would have missed anyway, the one with the 12. Yeah. But, like, it just, it just you know, set off the red flags like, hey, I think you're... Uh, Should at least be a 20 or 19. Or, yeah, you're, you're shortchanging yourself on some uh, accuracy. If uh, if this uh, persists, could we say that we add like what would be reasonable? Like it's either a minus six or either a minus four. I'd say so. The minus six is for the onslaught, and where does the minus four come from? That's that's the full attack. Like that's from the you know the uh, roll twenty macro because he's doing a full attack, quote unquote. So he's probably putting in the math for the onslaught because he wants it to roll twice. The roll 20 is just automatically calculating an additional minus four on there. So that 12 should be at least 16, but then probably plus it should, that, that 12 should be at least a 20 by my math. Um, yeah. Because you're saying... Because it doubles the minus six there. Well, it's not doubling the minus six. It's just that the minus six is the onslaught. Yeah. But that, min that minus four that says full attack, mm -hmm. that's from clicking roll 20 and making it roll twice. So if he's already calculating the onslaught, that minus four is unnecessary. And then... Um, so that's plus four to his attack roll, and then his BAB is wrong on this macro, so that should be another plus four. Okay. Um, I, I, com complicated, I know. But... No, 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 you, you're right, but uh, the minus four and the minus six should be a thing, right? That does add up to what I'm reading for both the full attack and 
the this one. Uh, it should it should only be the minus six, not the not minus four and minus six. It should only be minus six. Ah, aha. Yeah. Here's here's another question too. If it's a minus six or minus five, because you have the flashing, uh, you have the full attack here, and that usually you know you have. Let's see. Yeah, it becomes with flashing strikes a minus three penalty to each attack roll when there is a full attack. But then uh, if, yeah. if if there is the Solarian onslaught, does that mean that there will be a... Like, do you add the two together, the flashing strikes penalty of minus no. three together with the... Uh... Nope, conveniently, uh, the full text of flashing strikes says if you... Ha or the full text of onslaught says if you have the flashing strikes class feature, you instead take a minus five penalty as long as they are all melee attacks. So if you're using Onslaught, you take a minus five penalty to all yeah. three attacks. Mm -hmm. But if you're just doing a full attack and attacking twice, you only take a minus three penalty. Yeah. So because That's... you're doing so 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 <laughs> there there's even a, a little another layer of uh of whoopsie there. So that minus six should be a minus five. Also, yeah. so so good good catch on the flashing strikes because I had to scroll down to see that because it's yeah. not in the text of flashing strikes it's in the text of Solarian onslaught. So the way I see it here then is if we take a Solarian onslaught with the three full attacks, it should all come together as a ten plus. Uh, let's see, eight minus five. Is that correct then? Uh, no. So it should be 1d20 plus your BAB, which should be equal to your character level. So uh, your base roll is plus 14 plus your strength modifier, which looks like is 4. What's your strength score? Uh, it's... Uh... 18 in total, and a okay, modifier yeah. is 4. Yeah, okay. So your basic attack roll should be 14 plus 4, so 18. And it doesn't look like there's any other bonuses. You don't have weapon focus, right? Or do you have weapon focus as a, as a feat? Let's see... I have a weapon specialization, but not focus. Okay, yeah. So it just looks like your normal accuracy bonus should be plus 18. Okay, good. We clear that up. It, yeah, because you're it, like, as you, if you can see on the uh, like the solar weapon attack roll, it says 1d20 plus 10 BAB plus 4 ability. Should be plus 14 BAB plus 4 ability. All right, you're good. Uh, a, a Solarian has the a BAB equivalent to their character level. Like my BAB is lower than 14 because I'm a Technomancer. But yours should be equivalent to your level. Mm. All right. Um, is there anything else you guys want to discuss concerning the uh, uh, details of uh, Rogar's stats? Uh, I hope we're good for I, I, now. <laughs> yeah, I, I've slowed things down enough. No, it's 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 important. I mean, look at it. it it's hell in front of this tree. So, better get that damage output right. Um, so, Rogar, I'm going to put down 38 as your damage output. Do you agree? Yep. Okay. Sure. Very good. Uh, that uh that first attack up there. That one that that's 24. That one should be 
a 28, so potentially that. Yay! Woo! Whoa! Okay! Yes. So that one that says 48, like the one that says 12, that one, even after modifying, I think it's still too low to hit, but that, that first attack. Dear, dear Rogar, tell us what happens. Wow, okay. Um, I think seeing the cavalry arrive from the west, Rogar takes a confident stride forward and takes his pulls, puts his whole body into this swing and just does kind of a uppercut cleave, cleaving both one leg and right across its face, just opening up its face, forward, yeah, face, I don't know what else to call it, and all of this inside goop of mechanical parts and biological components just splash out onto the ground. <laughs> exactly, and the thing that splashes out it's also a sort of bile that's coming out of the creature. I'd like to I like you and the dog to throw a reflex save. Well, the dog is there. You has stepped in it. <laughs> I, okay. So, as a lasting resort from this beautiful creature, the following occurs to you guys. You are poisoned. Well, hold on, because they did a reflex save. Shouldn't... Mm -hmm. shouldn't shouldn't they be doing a fortitude save? Uh, no. At least doesn't say uh, on the on the creature's template. Because right. uh, Corin, uh, it's it's the fact that he attack them and therefore his postules open up and there's a whole splay, spray of the thing that's hit towards them so uh, the, the poison is there they just have to succeed the reflex save to avoid the splashing so that is a man damn that's a convenient way to also get around the buff that I gave everybody mm -hmm. because the buff only apply it, it's a plus four to fortitude save against poison yeah. so if you're making a reflex save then sorry guys your detox fire doesn't mean shit yeah. isn't that stuff still active as poison stuff or am i now getting wrong how that stuff works uh i don't know what corin set the staff at or for but he is within reach so uh um the the it's like a dome uh destry so if someone were to shoot a poison dart and he had that dome in front of him then he would be protected from the corrosive aura but i did say every kind of poison so that's true so corin if you have any idea what the poison staff is doing and you have three bennies to spend then i will uh listen to that because I, I don't recall you planning anything with that staff yeah uh, I did not set it to anything because the poison cloud was uh, not an immediate threat but I do have Benny's isn't the question that you change it? I mean, oh, I'm seeing it. You looked at the thing. Oh, that's what it does. Here you go, Rogar. And as nobody changes, I assume it's still on. It's poison. Yeah, I, thing, did, but... I, 
I, I didn't I did not as far as I'm concerned do that so I, I will uh, I'll give up the bennies to have that as an all right thing sure God. so then you are saved from this poison track provided that the staff is still active and protects you from all things poison related as the sage storm spells prescribed the yeah, creature but... good thinking destry by the way but then Corin has the stuff or not or where is the stuff then i don't know i'll uh spend another benny to yeah. say that just kind of like spiked it into the like oh yeah the roughly the entrance of the so like yeah that it's like there at, at like our fatal funnel all right cool the fatal funnel that's uh that's a good title for a D D novel <laughs> No, uh, that's what we call it in the in the military like when you're in a doorway a doorway is uh, fatal funnel fatal funnel like in because you don't don't stand in the doorways basically yeah awesome like anytime you're in a, like a training event like even if it's just like you know your nco talking to you and everything if you're standing in a doorway of something or other it's just like everybody will be like hey fatal funnel <laughs> um underneath rogar and destry the portal, the verdant portal of the tree opens and like close second to it, there's a sort of dial that you can pick where um, you can decide to which moon you would like to go if you want to. It's just an opportunity for you. And the Oracle of Oras says it's thanks. And um, um, yeah, now we still have these hypermites left. So with that, I would like to give the turn to set creature, creatures, excuse me, and they are attacking you, Corin, because we're not done. This little guy gives you a twenty-seven KAC claw uh, strike yep that manages to hit all right that's 13 damage same for this one he attacks you with uh, that's 23 KAC. That one misses. All right. Also that one. Twenty seven KAC. Hit. That's twelve damage for you. Corin, what are you doing? Let's see. Need to do a little uh, measurement here. Okay. Yeah, that's uh that's spicy enough. We'll do that. Um I'm going to utilize my flash teleport ability once again, not provoking an attack of opportunity. I'll spend a resolve point to quickly warp 30 feet in the air. Uh -huh. And rather than falling to the floor, because Corrin is so heavily augmented, uh, his four souls keep him standing apparently uh, thank you so much Shamoon for gra congratulating me on the rope I'm very happy with it I was just going through my gear and I noted that um, only my bracers and my uh, feet and my uh, staff are still uncommon but other than that my entire gear is rare. Now let's have a look at the 
the levels. 57, 39, that's, that's a little low. 51, 56, 55, uh, 53, 54, 48, 56, 48, 52. So, you know, it's not the best, but the thing is with Classic, you can actually, you don't really have to worry. Um, well, maybe in Endgame you do, but, but throughout the game you can, you can um, spend your time on some of these rares quite well. Um, so, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the rope. The rope also looks really cool. Like, I look like a, like a, an actual mage now. Also with the, with the devout crown. It looks pretty dope. Yeah, happy with him. So now I'm just gonna head to, uh, Eastern Plague Lands to, uh, do some quests. And while we wait for a slowly but certainly forming uh, raid party to go for to Upper Black Rock Spire. We need two tanks and a healer, and then we're go golden. Anyone want to tank or heal for Uber? Let's see if I have friends. No. Nice. A mí me dice un tangue si te quieres venir. No. Ah. Ah. The oh, fuck. What is he saying? A mí interesa un tangue si te quieres. I'm the one who's searching. I'm in your party. My mistake. Soy un poco idiota. Yeah. No pasa nada, ha ha ha. Ya somos dos. Alright, cool. Doesn't no pasa nada means it doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure. Ha ha ha. Yeah 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 is ha 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 ha. Because the yeah is the ha. Ya somos dos. I don't know what that is. Like we're cool. Something like that. Shimun says, for level 58, this gear you have is 90% better than fresh 60 mages, so don't worry about it. Alright, man. If you tell me, if you say so, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. I do get this odd feeling sometimes that most level 60s are just a bunch of friends that group up and just bash through these dungeons without thinking. But this gear... Not not to boast, but all of this is acquired through questing and and dungeons. So yeah, I think dungeons is actually the way to get to 60 really fast. I was thinking the other day, like, if I were to do this again, um, which is a terrifying thought because I'm almost at the end of this 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 search. Um would I do the same thing? Um I would probably roll for a tank or healer and then just spam dungeons. But that's a sad conclusion because that's not what Classic is about. It's about the world. But Jesus, am I done. <laughs> Do you have a level 60, Shimon? And if so, what kind? I'm calling you Shimon, but it's probably Shimon. Atunamant on BRD. Uh, no, I don't. Yet. Uh, no, I don't. 
How do I do that? No need for Uber S, no. Shit. Do I need to be attuned? No. Do I need to be attuned for... Oh, shit. It's in the autofill of Google. You don't need to be a tune, just need key. Yet we don't know, we don't go Blackwing Lair. What? So whenever that goes off, get this, I, uh, um, way back when I tried to, um, do a sort of supernova rendition of WoW, where you have to eat and drink in game to actually heal up. But in fact, eating and drinking in the game is done really well. So there's no need for it. And so the same as sleeping. I really like the sleep and eat and drink cycle of WoW. But I wanted to recreate something like uh, Supernova on um, Fallout 4 or whatever. Alright, so Shimon has a 60 mage on Netherguard Keep. I think Realm's called, but now I level a hunter on Zendalari Tribe. Dope. Um, hunters are... Um, I, I don't know why, but for some reason or another, I have a little bit of difficulty with Hunters on Classic. Um, um, no particular reason, it's just not entirely my thing. But I really like them in retail. This, um, especially Horde. I like Horde as a Hunter. Um, But hunters, I mean, back in the day, in 2006, only the cool kids were hunters. Because they wanted to be Legolas. Yeah. And I, I do think, like, a dwarf ranger can definitely pull it off. What race are you playing? I, I bet you play Alliance because of your icon. And if so, you know, for the Alliance. Whoa, for a second there, I thought this was a player. The thing is with Hunters, I remember that they would also have mail, and I remember being angry about that. And they would have like this... There was also this phase where they would have pole arms and swords, and they would sort of brush up against warriors and say, yeah, well, we're warriors as well, and we have a pet. So they're... In, in in my day, in in O six or O five even, there would have been there was a sort of back and forth between warriors and hunters, because those are always tied together in the alliance. Um, at least that's my memory of it. Okay, I, I guess we can just do one of these. Um. Hmm. Elemental equation is just core of elements means fighting elementals. Now, the only elementals that are here, to the best of my knowledge, are water elementals. So, hmm, why don't we just discover the map? But this is Scarlet Monastery, Corn's Crossing, let's go there. 
and go south and see what's what. Oh, shit. Or actually... No, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do something very not cool. I'm gonna go back to Stormwind because I actually want to go to Silithus. And I know a place that has very cool elementals in Ongoro. Um, so we're gonna have a little travel party, given that we're just waiting for this raid to work. Oh. Yeah, I play Alliance 90% of the time. I don't mind playing Horde, just like Stormwind and Night Elf. But then Ogremar and Horde raises. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of agree with... Um, at the point that you start to quest and play and be dedicated to a character, Alliance just has a better narrative. But what I really appreciate about World of Warcraft is that they fucking nailed combining both sort of Lord of the Rings aesthetic with the Alliance, but also Conan the Barbarian with uh, the Horde. Because the Orcs and Ogrimmar, um, that just straight up looks like the set of Conan the Barbarian, where, um, where Conan punches a camel. Um, and I don't know, I, I do always feel like... If you're an adult, you play the Horde. But the thing is, though, I get why people play Alliance more. Because it's just, there's just a lower threshold. Uh, it's, it's pretty difficult to keep looking at an Orc. Unless you're dedicated to it. I will say, however, man, I was thinking uh, earlier today how I really enjoy... Um, World of Warcraft as a game, like it's insane, right? They say that it's easy, but it's not necessarily easy. It's accessible, and then you're playing it for 10 days straight. That's the danger of WoW, in my opinion. Um, but there's there's a pang of wonder when you enter Gadgetsan, and you see those fucking undead and torrents and orcs sort of checking you out, like like lions prowling around their prey. And I do remember thinking, like, I'm genuinely scared of them. I'm genuinely scared of them. And I do appreciate that idea of the Horde, that I do consider them as the other side. Um, the other day, I was um, having this idea, when I reach level 60, I'm going to do a storm hunt. I've done this before. And a storm hunt essentially means that you just go and bash you bash pvp until mass pvp erupts so you 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 essentially just shout in stormwind hey i'm gonna do a tour of kalimdor anyone who wants to join and bash up uh the horde come and join and then you know you do that for a couple of hours and then it's over but if you have friends or a guild and you keep at it then at one point they're gonna they're gonna respond because you you can really halter their progress which led me to come up with this idea what if you instigate a war as the alliance with just just bashing them and then you create horde characters and you say shit like hey what the hell's going on with the alliance they're bashing us come join us and we 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 fight them back and then you create this norm of always haltering progression. I was actually, I was going further with this idea. If you go from Tanaris up till the Thousand Needles as Alliance, you essentially halter level 40 progression. And that's a pretty big thing. Um, because Tanaris is pretty difficult to reach for the Horde. Um, Ironically, because it's, you know, it's their yard, but you have to go through this, and if you just patrol this area with the Alliance, they would have to go through here. There is no other way to get to Tanaris. 
Whereas for us, it's way easier to get there through Theramore. So we have the upper hand there. Um, so yeah, I was thinking like if you if you really want to start a war between Horde and the Alliance, you start here and you just keep your region here. Now, of course, you don't want to halter their gameplay that isn't fun anymore, but you just sort of redirect them to leveling here. I don't know, something like that. Um, oh, shit, we're ready? Anyway, um, I was thinking of creating Horde next. First I'm going to pester the Horde with this character and then I might create a Horde and just kill the Alliance. Because I do think the Horde is awesome in PvP. I was also thinking of a cool challenge, which I'm going to call the Gurubashi Hardcore Challenge. Where you just create this norm that you play Hardcore and uh, get Arena Grandmaster. Ah, uh, yeah, cool, man. So, if you want to join, uh, my server is called... Ah, oh, fuck, what is my server? Um... I'm dumb. What's the name of the server? Oh, Jesus, isn't it layered? No, I don't think so. Firemaw, that's it. So, Shimon, if you're uh, if you're bored, come join. Uh, come join. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, Firemaw. Thanks. Uh, if you're bored, uh, come join us. Um, pretty sure I can get other people on board. I've done it before, um, which was essentially just going through Gurubashi and Gromgol for no apparent reason. But, um, I am I am a shitty PvP player, so I kill low levels, essentially, but I o always kill them, like, twice or something. Or once. I don't, I don't camp on their, their body. But it's really fun. It relaxes me. Look, here we go. Level 60 right there. This is the first time a level 60 is yellow for me. Yeah, it's Fire Maw. Why not storm crossroads in the Barrens? Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, fun. I like that idea. Thing is, though, um... Uh, yeah, I actually have nothing against that idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I had a phase two plan. So, first you do the tour, but then you actually have a second phase where you, um, go through every low-level area and you just take every mineral note that's there with a group of two. So if you do those th two phases and then every day you do them once, you will anger the Horde up to the stage that they won't play Horde and you just eradicate them from the server. Um, oh man. Someone is drawing a bargain here. Ah, Jesus, so I'm doing a raid? Is that what's going on? I think so. I, I have no idea what Upper Black Rock Spire is, to be honest with you. Uh, Shimon, well, now that you're here, do you have have you done uh, Upper Black Rock Spire? Right, I think we're I think we're live. I think we're all 
go in. Yeah, looks like it. Let's go. We're going, man. Jesus, I'm doing a raid, guys. Woohoo! Oh, damn, I can feel it. I can feel it. I'm feeling shit again. Uh, and and every time, guys, every time I do a raid, especially in classic, and I've done this, I don't know, I think three times in classic, the Burning Crusade era, every time it happens and I go there, I feel like, oh shit, I didn't do my homework, I don't know what to do, I don't have the requirement thingy for the thing, I don't have the, the utility gated item to get through the content shit like that it's it's insane I, I and the weird thing is that feeling never goes away but like stress for a job interview that fades away but this is something i'm always afraid of i'm gonna get a drink real quick Alright, shit. So, you're talking strategies, put one priest in each group for prayer or healing. Okay, so here's, I think I know what to do. I'm gonna stand well behind the the people that walk in front. I'm not gonna say anything, I'm just gonna cast Frostbolt until I drop. I did back in 2019 when Classic started. 2020. Oh, nice, man. Well, everyone out here, uh, sit back and relax, because we're doing a raid, and I'm not prepared at all. Mm. To be honest, if you've been following the channel, you know I'm a bit of a casual, um, and I think that's a little bit of an understatement. Um, but when I started in 05, I was a warrior and I didn't know anything about the dungeons. So I didn't understand threat, I didn't understand anything. Good times. Good times. Like that, ah, Jesus. Like this feeling is legit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Guys, not today. Fucking horde. Jesus. I don't know, I'm gonna be late. <laughs> this is my life. Oh, so that was real. Now I would love to be horde and do that all day long. Because it has more zin zing when you're the horde and you kill players. When you play the alliance and you kill the horde, I just essentially feel like a purist. Like a Puritan. Yep. But with the Horde, I'm like, alright. Man, I'm really happy that I'm in the guild with the raid leader. So, I'm in a Spanish guild, but that is entirely by accident. I started speaking Spanish in a party, but I don't speak Spanish. They were entertained. So now they got me into their fold. But 
it turns out that they're actually a pretty hardcore <laughs> guild. So yeah, I'm a I'm a Dutch dude who is playing in a raid guild that is Spanish. This is true WoW Classic. Oh, thank you. If I see a moon icon, I need to keep it. Cheers, plural. Cheers. That's good. I'm on the fence of... Um... Ah, no, I'm not, actually. I was... In terms of aesthetics, I was thinking of becoming a fire mage. But the frost mage is just too... There's too much going on that's in my favor. It's too rewarding to be a frost mage. It's too efficient. It's too... Uh-oh. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to go through the Burning Steps so much. It still doesn't bore me. I like the Burning Steps. It has this continuous aesthetic that I'm in love with. This is truly... This is like classic fantasy, man. Fucking Mordor land, you know? It is a cool dungeon, in, in like in terms of. Um, that's the other thing. I, I tend to play RPGs and MMOs and stuff like that, to sort of get inspired for D and D, but when you build a dungeon for D and D, it's not the same as you do for game design, because it takes way too long to do it. Um, like they do in the games. Actually, I've come to learn that um, many dungeons in, for example, TRPGs, MMORPGs, souls like the Metroidvanias to an extent, they are so much more work than creating a dungeon for D&D. There's even this uh, uh, consideration that d d dungeons are not that fun to run, but I disagree with that. I do like layout of a dungeon. Like, for example, in the episode that we're listening to right now, which I won't play because I'm too, too on the nose with this uh, session. Um, fuck. I'm going to wait for this guy. Hey, not a good look. That was my old guild. I doubt he remembers me.
Oh man, I'm so happy I'm not playing Lethal Discovery. It's not for me. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm actually kind of anxious. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I should have. Um, Alright, let's pay attention where to go. So we're going to the left. Okay. Whoa. There we go, guys. Mm. Hey. Lizardo. The siempre. The bueno. Let's give everybody a bit of water. Priest. Oh, that's all. So what's going on? We're I've never been here, I think. Can you believe that? I've never been here. Easy. That was easy. The black hand. Whoa. So these are the black hand. These are the guys. So in the first war of Warcraft, so this is orcs versus humans, the orcs came from um, uh, the blast, uh, what's it called? Blasted Lands. And they actually set Stormwind to blaze. The humans fled to Lordaeron, and um, they essentially took uh, Blackrock as well. Um, and then in the second war, the dwarves and gnomes teamed up with the Alliance, and Ogrim Doomhammer actually formed the Horde. Um, and it was essentially the North versus the South, and I don't think Kalimdor was featured in Warcraft 2. Well, it was it was hinted at because you had troll rogues. Or trolls, rather. But the trolls looked like orcs. So, no, it was orcs, I'm pretty sure. They had um, death knights in Warcraft 2.
All right. Shimon is happy with these fellas. Yeah, they seem... Oh, shit. They seem good. Hardcore. Using add-ons and shit. So, just to validate what I'm doing, this is a raid, right? Like, I am doing the thing. It's not like they made a raid out of a dungeon group. I think it's an official raid. Let me check that. Upper Black Rock Spire. That's like, wow. Well, it's a dungeon. So why do they make it a raid if it's... Raid or dungeon? Question mark. It's a 10-man dungeon. Therefore... Would fall under a raid, I suppose. But it's not like 40 man shit. But that maybe is pushing pushing the fantasy a little bit. I think this is a, a raid. This is definitely not a dungeon because you need 10 people. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. I get it now. It's a, a mini raid. What would you say, Shimon? Does this fall under what we now know as a raid? a dungeon yeah 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 I feel the same why why do I agree with you because um, I think we both think like a raid that is like that's a fucking thing you have 40 people you you have the materials with you 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 read the guide you don't get to fuck up Something like that, right? Hmm. Just gonna greed. Don't wanna. Who's asking? Frozen Bane. Ooh, I need that. Do I? Yes, I do. Uh oh. Hmm. 
We have a new staff. Wow. Ooh, that looks cool. Alright, what are we doing with the eggs here? Feel like I have to stand next to the healer. Okay. This is this the Leeward Cave, mate? Is this it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Alright, chumps, let's do this. Is that here? Oh, hold up. Let's see if this is... Is this... Nah, can't be. But I remember that was with more than 10 people. Or was it 10? Alright, chumps, let's do this. I I experienced that life. Did you... Were you a Vanilla WoW player? It's like the first viral video of WoW. Oh my god, so this is the this is the Leroy Jenkins cave. Oh I'm honored. Wow, history. Right here. It's as if I'm like it's as if I'm walking through the battlefield of Ferdun or something. Like this is history. Digital history. Like there's people that collect like pieces from the Berlin Wall. I, all I want is an item from this place. I got a fucking staff here. Oh, it's the Solacar Flame Wreath. Fucking even more rare than a Stradivarius. Bam. Wow. Don't just grab it. This is going quite well. I don't have a target. All right. Ah, oh, man. Is it's this is such an insane game. Like 
10 days I've been playing it, so that's 240 hours to get to one of the most obscure dungeons in the game. I feel like I've watched Citizen Kane and now I get it. Uh Yes, so you played it and you played WoW. But you didn't know Leroy back in the day, and you were a kid that didn't know English at all. Where are you from, man? Croatia. You live near Sakura. Ooh, nice. Nice. That's where, um, is Sakura near... Is that where they filmed, uh, uh, like the capital city of, um, Game of Thrones? Oh, bollocks. Oh, I pulled. Oh, this is how that feels. Shit. Oh, Dubrovnik, yeah. I think they film more fantasy movies and series in Croatia. Um, like, I know that Conan the Barbarian was filmed in Spain, but I think also somewhere... Wait. Where was Conan the Barbarian filmed? No, no, it was entirely Fran uh, Spain. Sorry. Mistake. Um, Croatia. Why do I get the feeling that a lot of movies were shot there? Am I just entirely wrong? Um... Yeah, no, it's just, yeah, Dubrovnik and Croatia. Looks like a cool country, man. There was this, um, I was, uh, um, when I was level 30, like a couple of months back, I found someone from Switzerland and I would spend an hour describing a dish that I had in Switzerland. And she actually knew what I was talking about it was capoons. And I found the recipe and I made them. That was really cool because I'm, I'm getting good at cooking. Yes. Finally, I, I, I look forward to cooking now. That's a new thing.
Okay. Right, so this is a breeze with this party. Well, who's carrying this party? Let's have a look. Um, let's let's judge the people here. See, the thing is, and I might be wrong, but for the life of me, I don't see tanks wearing shields that much. I think am I am I making that up? Let's see. Who who is He's a rogue. He's a he's a thing. That's that's our warrior, Fury. That's our other warrior. Also Fury. Hey, am I old or have I for the life of me? Not seen a tank wear a shield for the duration of WoW Classic. Ah, buenas tardes, amigo. Uh -uh. Uh, they don't need a shield? Uh-huh. Okay. Let me see, how do you explain that? Dungeon is easy if you have good gear, so they don't need shield to protect them. And have good enough HP and armor without shield and do more damage as DPS, but have enough threats to tank. Right, that makes sense. We're all death knights now. So they just want to be part of the DPS. That seems fair. I just remember, like, back in the day, if you were a tank, it was like, if you were a prot protection warrior, you would fucking boast with a shield. Like, that would be your signature thing. And they were pretty cool. They were like, um... You know, you, 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 they commanded quite some respect. And now, let's see, what is what class am I most fond of? Well, I do find this warrior to be pretty cool. Um, this one also looks pretty dope. But that's all Fury, what they're doing. Um, this is an arms warrior. Hmm, I don't know about that. Only a few mobs buzz that hit hard enough to require a shield as long as you have active healing coming your way. Ah, okay. So that's different. Mitigated by armor and avoidance. Okay. So just full dependence on healer and heavy DPS. See, this is what I don't get. Why do tanks do far more damage? But you're Fury spec, right? Ah. 
How is that more VPS? What? There's a Fury Protection spec. What? Magic. Okay. Less damage, more armor. Hmm. Hmm. That's actually quite interesting. I have no idea what he's saying. So he says that he's a Fury tank spec, does dual wield, which gives him... Whoa. Gives him more armor, but less DPS. But he's saying if he's full tank spec, and he has a shield, that means he has far more armor. Oh, maybe that's it. Oh, I think I get it. So... Full protection warrior means more armor, less damage. Fury tank spec means mediocre armor, more damage. I think that's it. Yeah. Whoa. I think I was thinking way too difficult. Um, wow, cool. Now let's do it. Jesus. What a cool dungeon. The black hands and the dragons work together. Together with the dark iron doors.
Okay. Let's make sure we drink here. Out of combat. Should be okay. Eleven thirty two damage. That's not too bad. I need to target something first. Okay. No, no, no. It's too someone said that I should spam Blizzard, but Frostbolt is way more efficient in terms of mana. Oh my god. Imagine doing this on hardcore and someone is grieving you. Oh, I would. Oh, no. Holy shit. Holy shit. It's the. Like, I love that teeny violin video, but on the other hand, it's the stuff of nightmares. When you really think about it. <laughs> Shit. Gotta make sure I'm still LOSing him, but this seems to be okay. Let's do a cinematic moment. Man, they are depleting my mana. That means this is a good fight.
Oh my god. That's terrifying. Right, let's see what this guy has. I'm out of range. <sighs> Man. What a cool fucking boss. Resisting everything I have, though. Actually target me. Um very cool. We bested him. Oh shit, I got it. Give him Is there anyone else who needs an intellect buff? I don't think so. Very important immediately as they spawn, swap to them and nuke them down ASAP. And then kill boss. The boss will do a lot of AoE damage. Okay. So if the mobs, if the ants spawn, kill the ants, kill the boss, watch out for AoE. What? Oh, come on. It's a quest. I'm taking it. Hi, how are you? You have a great day now. Be seeing you. Ever look? Where is that? <sighs> All right, guys, let's just do it. We got it. We got this. Um, I'm pretty sure we got this. We got this guy. Come on.
Nuke him down. ASAP. Well, I'm going to use my trinket. I'm ready. I got this. I got this. Fucking got this. You you got nothing on me. All right. Come on. Come on. Ed. Come on. Oh shit. Lord Felfalak. All right. Kill ads. Watch out for his AoE. Keeps resisting me. Where are the ads? Oh, there. Oh no, we're wiping. Shit. Come on, more, more, more. It's a fucking wipe. I'm going to play a bit of the episode again. On nothing. And utilizing a battery that stored the um, thermal energy from Heat Leech, I'm going to cast Explosive Blast and give myself a boost to Explosive Blast. Because if you use Heat Leech first, and then, uh, let's see, where is 
the spell. It's like a combo. Yeah. Combo ability. Where are you? Heat Leech. There you are. Um, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. You deal 13 D8 cold damage. You can store the gathered heat into a used battery. And if you do so and use that battery to cast Explosive Blast within one minute, the spell deals an additional 2d6 fire damage. So instead of 9d6, I will do 11d6 fire damage. Uh, take a little page from the dwarves on this one. Um, and I'm going to center it. Yeah, that's... Ugh, I don't like that. Okay. So as not to scorch Destry, or not Destry, Rogar, excuse me. Uh, I'll center it back here. It's a 20-foot radius. Uh, Corrin is airborne at this point outside of the radius. I'm 30 feet in the air. So all these guys get hit. Um, that one up there, you can see the one I'm pointing at. That mm -hmm. one is not affected. It is outside of the radius. I couldn't get that one. All right, and everyone else is... Yeah, everyone else, a 20-foot radius, so, uh, yeah, ev everyone close right here, this little cluster. Um, you know, this guy, this guy, obviously, that guy, not affected. But... All right. And how much damage? Oh, yeah, and the, uh, the other dude is toast, so I don't have to worry about spell resistance. All right, so um, it will be a DC 22 reflex save from all those creatures, and it is, damn it, 34 fire damage. All right, let's see if I can. Reflex half. Yeah. So if they pass, it's 17. Twenty. It's a fail. Okay. So that's thirty-four damage for all of them. I do believe you mentioned something about fire resistance for those guys. Yeah. So they they probably take a little bit less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take uh, twenty-four. Still, when you think about it, it's 24 damage to all those creatures, so technically I did almost 200 damage. Yeah, you did. Cause... It's all well and good. And also, so I'm trying to... Suck it, Rogar. Trying to look at your cult damage thingy. Heat Leech? Oh, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, Heat Leech was, um, when I cast that one, that one was 57 cold damage. Ah, ha, ha, ha. All right. Very good. So, yeah, you're firing all of them, except for a couple. But all of them are, first of all, afraid. So they all wish to scatter, and they'll return. But uh, you damage them really badly. Furthermore, you set the forest alight. So, um, yeah, everything around you is set ablaze, and it's spreading. Uh, I can, of course, let me just, um, I'm, I'm looking for a nice picture for that one. Um, that makes sense, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hot dog. And where uh, in the air are you standing, uh, dear Corbin? So I, I was just thinking uh, 30 feet straight up. 
So because it's like a 30 foot radius, it's kind of like a dome. I'm, I figure I'm well outside of the blast radius. But, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I'm in the air, just kind of like standing on what appears to be nothing at all. Nice. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. So this um, little fire is spreading. Uh, good job. I like it. Um, so, yeah, this creature is really trapped, so all he can do is attack uh, dear Corin in front of him. And he hits our dragonkin mm, with 26 to KAC. Yeah, that that hits. Man, I'm throwing good today. Yeah, too bad you're hitting a big, big meat wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's 17 damage. Yeah, okay. Now let's focus here. We gotta focus. Is there anything I can do to buff myself? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a little bit sleepy. <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Born ready. Can you stop resisting my attacks? Thank you. Shit. I need to target something first. I don't have a target. Well, he looks like uh, one of those guys that's in the intro cinematic of uh, Onimusha 3. This one I don't need. This one I want.
Whoa, I want it. Fuck. Oh well. Fucking gnome. Looks like shit. Oh, look at me, I have a cool staff. Rick. Oh, this is not good for me. <laughs> I don't have a target. Well, I'm still getting tons of experience, so... It's all Gucci. What is this? Wow, they, they did the practicality quite well. Oh. So, before Destry's turn is up, these guys are starting to shoot and advance. And they are slowly picking off what, um, what Corin couldn't uh, get thus far. So they're fighting with these two. That all works. And slowly, but certainly, this beautiful biome has become an absolute bloodbath. Um, scorched earth, um, creatures with, with yellow pus coming out of their uh, skins. It's, uh, it's a sad sight around a beautiful thing like the Oracle of Oras. But a necessary one for your survival. That's three. Um, this looks like a holiday to you. What are you doing? Uh, 
Well, so that orange thing that actually the forest on fire. So it's not just anymore the effect of Corrin's explosion. Uh, yeah, exactly. The, the, the fire sort of made an explosion out of it. Oh, sorry. The explosion made a fire out of it, in a way. Uh, well, but uh, but it, it's a massive fire, or it's just a bit of grass burning. It'll be fine. No, this one has the potential of a forest fire. Because also these creatures have some acid in them, so they're also inflammable. Oh god. Uh And you know, because of the what? Sage Storm spell, all these t tree trunks they're spread all over the map as you can see. Uh, that's because of the storm, so things get a light pretty quickly. Get a lit pretty quickly. Uh, uh, yeah, so Destry just starts going, what the f***? Uh, but, well, I don't know. But uh, that being said, Destry, you do think that... Um, you're not sure if the whole planet will be set ablaze. It's just... It will take a few moments. I'm not worried about the entire plant. I'm worried about the tree I'm in. It's wood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, I have to spread the entire planet. I still need to get out. But hey, we still have the portal, so it's like... True. Yes. But if it have to, we'll just use that portal and go somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh... For what it's worth, the tree does have fire resistance. What? I definitely doesn't know that. No, true. Uh, <laughs> right, so uh, I will full attack uh, as they're a bit almost dead. This can get a bit uh, complicated. So I will just roll my attack and then we need to see uh, which hit and which don't hit because I can uh, change targets. So I start with attacking that one, which okay. well, assuming it's a hit does I've been uh, passing uh, the episode quite a bit now. Because um, things are happening. Okay, shit, I'm not reading at all. Uh, put a shield on and dang the boss. I'll grab the ads. Mm -hmm. And then take over the boss when they are dead. Type boss, then block. One mage or... It can get too messy. Besides, I'll use Diamond Flask. I'll probably pull aggro anyway. If the fuck process and change the boss, I'll pull aggro again. Whatever. Go. Oh no. I'm going to target whatever this guy's targeting.
go, 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 go. Okay, vamos. We did it. Yes. Um, do I want it? No, I don't need it. Holy shit. Oh, 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 oh. Look at me. I'm cool. All right. All right, fellas, what a conclusion. Look at me. Look. Look at me, guys. I look like a... I look like a dude you, you, you avoid at a meeting. I look like one of those presidents who goes to the Bohemian Grove. All right, let's uh, let's go to the tavern and log off. What a cool game! Alright fellas, see you later, yeah? This was a good run. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, thanks for talking in the live chat. That was really fun. And uh, I'll see you uh, I'll see you some other time. Good night everybody.